Deputy Clare Daly. Um, Minister, this is an issue that we discussed with uh, former Minister Shatter the, on his last appearance here, actually, where he told us that the uh, nobody in the Curragh would be rendered homeless, that they would engage with people uh, in order to look at accommodation or alternatives from them. And yet, in the last two weeks, three eviction notices were served on residents there, including a number of quite ill citizens and really the question is about would you agree to honour the previous commitments made to engage with the residents in order to discuss the issue of uh, so-called overholding in the Curragh? Thank you. Minister. I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Daly for a question. As has been, um, as has been question number three, as been previously uh, said, the military personnel are obliged under Defence Forces regulation to vacate married quarters within 21 days of retiring or being discharged from military service. The term overholder is used to describe former members of the Defence Forces and their families who have refused to leave married, qu married quarters when obliged to do so. The situation of older overholders continuing to occupy married quarters is no longer sustainable, and measures to resolve uh, this are being progressed. Properties located outside barracks are offered for sale uh, to the, the, the occupants. Those that are located within barracks are not for sale as uh, the property is required to be re uh, retained uh, for future military use for security reasons. My department is therefore, in accordance with normal procedures, seeking vacant possession of married quarters which are being overheld um, and will uh, continue to do so until the overholding issue is re uh, resolved. Any initiative to resolve overholding must support the and complement the current policy, which dates back to 1997, of withdrawing from the provision of married quarters. In the period since January 2013, 12 properties uh, were uh, overheld in the area of the Corrie camp have been returned by occupants. Presently, there are uh, 28 overholders remaining at the camp. This represents, represents a small uh, group in relation to the large number of military personnel who occupied such quarters over the years but who returned the properties to the department on their retirement as they were required to do so. Ten of the present group of older holders do not pay uh, charges in respect of the use of the property, including some cases uh, charges uh, for the use of electricity. Of the remaining overholder cases at the camp, the department is aware that a small number of occupants may be particularly vulnerable uh, due to their personal circumstances. In light of this, uh, the Department has been examining what assistance it might provide in order to bring about a resolution. My officials in the Department will contact these individuals once the range of options are, uh, are open uh, uh, to the Department and are uh, determined. It is preferable uh, not to leave, uh, have the use of legal means to obtain vacant possession of the properties concerned. However, the ongoing uh, illegal occupation of military uh, property by those who have no entitlement to do so uh, cannot be supported. It is important to remember also that the Department of Defence does not have a role in the privilege of housing accommodation for former members of the Defence Forces uh, for, our, our, uh, for the general public. Deputy Daly. I have to say, Minister, your response is wholly inadequate. Uh, you have just rehashed information that's been given in this House many times, and you didn't deal with the question that was asked, which is that events have moved on since the mantra that you read out to us before, in that um, there have been developments on the ground. Both myself and Deputy Wallace met with the property management section uh, in the Curragh camp um, a number of months ago. The residents uh, this week met with representatives also, but you haven't addressed the issue that um, in the intervening period the Department of Defence has sought fit to issue eviction notices to a number of other people, which goes completely against what Minister Shatter said previously. And I'll just word it out to you again, like where he said, no one will be rendered homeless on the basis of the manner in which we deal with these issues. And he acknowledged that there are a number of elderly and vulnerable Thank citizens you. there. So if you like, your actions contradict that. I wonder, could you comment on the fact that the group which met the department um, on Friday put forward a suggestion that O'Higgins Terrace might be renovated. That is an order which could technically be handed over for the County Council because of where it's situated in the camp. There was a suggestion that that would be given active consideration. You. So you, could you confirm that that is the case and that you will, as you said, you wanted to withdraw from legal proceedings in the meantime? 
and just stuck. Uh, just let me stress that uh, there are a number of uh, people who are in residence there in the married quarters um, who are very vulnerable, and the department will examine these people on a case by case basis. Uh, but these are good. If you look at the provisions that, um, uh, um, like, once you were a soldier and you were living in the mar married quarters, that was okay. But there was always uh, that, that, that once you retired uh, from the defence forces, you were to vacate uh, these premises. So people were under no illusions over the past number of years of the terms and conditions uh, that were very much involved uh, in, in this. And I can, it is amazing that the department pays the property tax in respect of each house occupied by the overholder. Um, the overholders do not have to pay their bins. The bins are collected. Uh, by uh, the Defence Forces in the uh, general bin collection uh, contract to uh, the CORA. And uh, some overholders don't even have to pay for their electricity. So when you, you are representing uh, the struggling people of, of, uh, uh, of your own constituency, uh, you have people here who don't have to pay property tax, don't have to pay for their bins, Thank and don't you. have to pay for their electricity. So, like, you know, there are, there are no illusion of uh, what an... The, uh, when you talk about there, there are a number of uh, legal, legal proceedings happening and they will continue. Minister, dead. your comments are derogatory and in fact they're inaccurate and you haven't moved on with developments at all. There was an agreement here with Minister Shatter that there would be a technical assessment of the properties in the Curacam from an assessment point of view. Uh, a, a limited technical assessment was done on Pierce Terrace. I'd like to see the outcome of that because on the information which Minister Shatter gave us, uh, it is possible to renovate some of those dwellings for accommodation uses, which in the present climate of a housing crisis in this state is something that everybody should be concerned about. Uh, it is also the case, you say on the one hand that you're looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis and then you slander basically everybody who lives there and try and make out that none of them pay their bills. I put it to you that Department officials met with residents on Friday and discussed a possibility of renovating O'Higgins Terrace as a possible dwelling. If you're saying that no one will be made homeless, that there are vulnerable people there, what alternatives are you being put in place to deal with that? Is the O'Higgins Terrace proposition being considered? And in the meantime, will you withdraw from legal proceedings and discuss this in a rational way with the families and individuals who serve this state so loyal to, loyally in their membership of the Defence Forces over the years. Minister. Well, let me state from the outset that we will not be able to join for any legal proceedings that will be continued uh, uh, in that case, uh, because this has been continuing on for quite some time. And uh, it is my department's policy to review each old holder situation on a case-by-case -case basis. As each case is, a case is different, I cannot preempt how overholders you have uh, grouped together will be dealt with uh, in the future. As I have already mentioned before, both the cost of renovation of the properties and the security issues regarding the civilian occupation of quarters within the military barracks present, uh, present problems <coughs> which are uh, difficult uh, to overcome. Uh, but I've taken uh, the uh, deputies' uh, views on board, and I think there has been a huge amount of consultation uh, between the department and uh, the residents in uh, the Curra, and th there has been numerous meetings um, that have taken place over uh, quite some time, and uh, I understand that deputies from all sides of the House here uh, have been in contact uh, with the Department of uh, each individual concerns of some of the uh, residents uh, uh, there. Uh, but look, this, this goes back uh, that when you retire from the Defence Forces, uh, there was always a condition there uh, that you uh, you no longer uh, were a, a resident or entitled to a house, and, and, that, and that was that has been the case, and that has never Thank been you. taken from any uh, member who who uh, uh, had uh, the, the right to a property.